you, you often see pictures of polar bears looking like this. They're lying on the ice or lying on rocks and sort of spread out. And they look very relaxed and chilled, and, but they're actually doing something which is important to actually save their lives. Their fur is so good that even in the coldest extremes, polar bears can actually overheat. The insulation is that good. So they fl flatten, them, flatten themselves out on the ice to make sure they don't overheat. A polar bear is an animal that can be both cold and overheating and sweating all at the same time. That's exactly like a DBA or a developer. The moment after they've done something catastrophic to their database, like drop a table or delete some data, you're both cold and sweating at the same time, which leads us nicely into flashback drop. Three words that we never want to hear as developers, com delete, commit, uh-oh, and to solve that, we use flashback transaction. But three words could be worse. Three words could be two words. And those two words are more at the DBA perspective when you go drop followed by uh-oh, because your table is gone. What happens there is you generally fire up LinkedIn, start looking for new jobs because you know your career has just about come to a halt at your current employer now that you've dropped perhaps a mission critical table. Yeah, that's pretty much the first thing you do when uh, you drop something like that. Or once you've regathered your calm, you generally walk into your manager's office and say, I've got some bad news. You describe the employee table and it's gone, leaving you here between a rock and a hard place and an awkward conversation with your manager. But all is not lost. Ideally, we'd like to have a command called undrop. And funnily enough, in the original very first Oracle database, which I think was 10 that had flashback drop in it, it was, the beta was actually called undrop. You could undrop a table. Uh, but obviously, we need something, you know, something a bit cooler than that. So now it's flashback table to before drop. It's the recycle bin metaphor. We've had this on PCs for a lot of years. You delete a file and what the operating system does is secretly just rename it and maybe move it to an, a secret folder like the recycle bin or the trash can. It's the same in the Oracle database. There we have a view called user recycle bin, which shows you effectively a list of objects that have been dropped, but not actually removed from the database. So when I actually drop the table called emp, by default, it will be renamed to these lovely cryptic names you can see there, bin dollar, followed by a system generated name, bin dollar being the recycle bin. You can actually see what's in it using show recycle bin in SQL plus and SQL CL. When you drop the table, it becomes bin dollar something, all the indexes, constraints, triggers, all the subordinates uh, of that table will all be renamed as well, such that they, the real names could be reused. So if I was doing an implementation where I dropped the employee table and recreated it, I can reuse that name employee because all those objects have been renamed. How do I get it back? I simply do flashback the employee table to before drop. It will go look in the recycle bin, find the original name of employee and rename that bin dollar table back to the employee table. If there is a new employee table in place, I can, for example, do flashback the employee table to before it was dropped, but while I'm bringing it back, just rename it to old employee. So as to not overwrite, for, for example, an, a new version of the employee table. One thing to note is when you do that, the subordinate objects are not renamed back. So that becomes your responsibility. If you were accidentally dropped the table, you'd flash back before drop, and then you would rename these individual objects to being their original names. The question is, how long is this going to work for? If I dropped the table yesterday, can I get it back? If I dropped the table last year, can I get it back? Well, that's one of those how long is a piece of string kind of uh, questions. Because what we do is, obviously, a drop table, if it's not really removed, it occupies space in this table space that it originally sat in. And what will happen is at this, as that table space fills up with normal tables, rather than make the table space bigger and bigger and bigger ad infinitum, as the table space gets close to full, we will start expiring out these dropped objects. If you have huge amounts of free space in your table space, then there's a good chance that a dropped object from a week ago or a year ago might still be in there. If you're running at 95, 98% all the time and you're regularly creating new objects, then old objects are going to get turfed pretty quickly. It really depends on how much free space you have on your table spaces. You can manually remove things from the recycle bin if you want. You can purge a particular table, like purge emp, or you can purge the recycle bin, which is all the objects in your schema that have been dropped in the past. Purge things for a particular table space. Did I put it in there? I didn't. You can actually purge DBA recycle bin as SysDBA, which clears the recycle bin across the entire database. One thing I should stress is undoing a drop table is not the same as undoing a truncate. If you truncate a table, that data is 
toast. And you could argue it's a more severe operation than a drop because a drop you can get back. You can you know, flash back before drop. Untruncate doesn't exist in any version of the Oracle database. I'm